The iPad has the potential to be a productivity powerhouse, but most people aren't even using it to its full potential. Here are over 30 tips to try out to help you get the most out of yours. Before we get started, I'm gonna be showing you all of these on my iPad Pro to make it easy for you to see, but you can do anything I'm about to show you on any current iPad all the way down to the iPad mini, which is my personal favorite, just as long as you're running iPad OS 18 or newer. Now these tips range from ways that you can customize your iPad layout through to advanced Apple Pencil hacks and the many, many things you can do with your fingers. Yeah, I'll let you just fill in the joke I was gonna write about that one. <laughs> Customizing your iPad then, and I want to start with a bunch of ways that you can personalize your home screen and experience. And no, I'm not gonna tell you simple stuff like how to change the lock screen text. I know you're much better than that. Now the first one is a way to make the icons fill more space. So if you go into jiggle mode, hit the top left corner and then edit and customize, you can then select large versus small icons. You'll see here that this gives you larger icons that fill the screen out a bit more and also gets rid of the text under each app. You can also customize the apps here with different colors like a different tint. This blue goes quite nicely with my wallpaper and also pick exact colors from your background or pretty much any website using this color picker tool. This is really nice if you want a more consistent look across your display and every single app and widget is gonna reflect this look. Now with iPad OS 18, you can finally be much more deliberate about what sits where. So when you go into jiggle mode and move an app or a widget around, it will stay where you want it without having to sit it next to something else. So if you have a nice image that you're using for a wallpaper, you can make it so that all your apps kind of sit around it, if that's your thing. One other customization I quite like is to make the whole thing grayscale. So if you wanna make your iPad less distracting, you can just head into settings, accessibility, display and text size, and then look for color filters before flicking this little toggle and picking grayscale. This generally helps with focus and also makes the whole thing much more appealing to people that like films about bondage. Now you know what I'm talking about, 50 shades of Never mind. Another cool new feature to iPad OS 18 is the change to control center, which is that little menu that appears when you swipe down from the top right. Now, most people just use this to switch Wi-Fi on and off, but there's now a ton that you can do with this. Firstly, you can reorder what appears where by putting it into jiggle mode. You can also make these controls bigger or smaller, depending on how prominent you want them to be. And you can also remove them or add new ones. There's absolutely loads to choose from. Just look at all of this. It's pretty cool. And if you run out of space, you can split the control into different sections like music, apps, and so on. Well, one more thing I wanted to show you in the new Photos app, by the way. I know it's not been the most popular addition to the latest OS because it has all these extra features like intelligent albums and trips and memories, which you probably won't care about seeing. And if you wanna turn this mess of albums and extra sections and make it the way it used to be, all you need to do is scroll right to the bottom, tap on Customize and Reorder, and then you can just untick anything that you don't wanna see. I like to keep it simple with albums, media types, and shared albums. Anything else, I know I can just use search for. By the way, in the latest OS, if you're running Apple Intelligence, you can just find anything by searching for a particular feature. So if I wanna find pictures of me on a beach, here we go. Here I am when I used to have spiky hair, and yeah, I know what you're thinking. I definitely look like a Japanese cartoon. Now let's take a look at some tips when it comes to using Apple Pencil. And before we do, you'll be needing an essential accessory, which is a Paperlike, who are kindly sponsoring this video. Just in case you've been living on Mars and you haven't heard about Paperlike, they make amazing iPad accessories and screen protectors that help you take neater notes and draw more accurately by giving you this really thin layer of resistance between your iPad and your Apple Pencil. And when I say thin, it's about as thin as a human hair. And I know I haven't got much to compare it against, but just take my word for it. It's thin. Paperlike is covered in these tiny nano dots, which are designed to emulate the feeling of writing on paper without you having to do something stupid like this. Now, obviously, it doesn't feel the same as paper, but with a paperlike, on the other hand, you just get this helpful drag and tactile feedback that feels so much nicer than the frankly unsettling sensation of a pen slipping around on a naked glass display. Just have a listen to this.
The latest 2.1 edition of Paperlike is also Swiss made, which is a kind of a nice coincidence because using it feels about as smooth as skiing down a nice easy run on a Swiss mountain. And they're available for every single iPad size and model. They also have a handy Pro Planner available, which will help you get organized on your iPad. This works with all your favorite note taking apps and helps you stay on top of everything that's happening on a daily, weekly, and year round view. Check out Paperlike at the link in the description or by scanning my code just over here. Right, back to the video. So some drawing tips. First one, if you're in Apple Notes and you're handwriting text, if you end up writing it all a bit too close together, you don't need to redo the whole thing. If you tap and hold, you'll see this yellow line appears in the text, which will let you pull things over to space it all out. And this can be a bit hit and miss, but I found that it does work more often than not, and it's definitely easier than erasing and rewriting the whole thing. Now, a lot of people would use a pencil for adding their signature to documents and reports, that kind of thing, but if you're in Notes, you you can just head to this little menu here, you can write out your signature. You can then store and insert your signature anywhere that it's needed, so you don't have to manually write it out every time. You can also store different versions of it, just like your first name or maybe your initials, and then once it's in a document, you can play with the size or the placement, as well as change the color and the weight. Now thinking about Squeeze, which is a new feature in the Apple Pencil Pro, you can program your iPad to do lots of different things with this. So if you head into the settings and go to the Apple Pencil menu under Actions, you can choose from all of this stuff and literally any shortcut that you have available. So now if I want, I can have a pencil squeeze, start defrosting my car, or more practically, start creating a task in Things 3. Another quick pencil tip, not a pencil tip, you know what I mean, Scribble. This is something that I use quite a bit if I'm hopping between handwritten notes and other apps. Let's say you want to quickly check something on a website, you can just write the name of the site that you want and the iPad will automatically convert it to text. This works in any text field, by the way, not just in Safari. And if you're wanting to get rid of something, you can set the eraser tool to just erase something with one tap rather than having to rub it all out like a complete newbie. Just go into the drawing tools menu, select the eraser, and then rather than choosing a size, just hit the plus icon and you'll see a little cross appear on the top of the eraser tool. After you've done this, you can just tap on an object anywhere and the whole thing will disappear. You don't need to spend ages rubbing it out. Now, speaking of making things disappear, one of the things I quite like using the Apple Pencil for is for cleaning up images in the Photos app. I don't use Lightroom or anything fancy like that, but let's just say I like this picture I took when I was out for a walk with my sister, her dog, and my kids. But I wanted to remove her cockapoo from the image. So I just go into Edit, hit Clean Up, paint out little Molly here, and voila, she's gone. Just like that Marty McFly film. Sorry, Molly. Love you really. Two more on the drawing front. I really like the option to add a quick note by swiping up from the bottom right of your screen. This also works with your finger too, but I also think this is like having an infinite number of post-its just sat there on your iPad. You just swipe up and start writing. It's just really easy to get something down if you're in a rush and you know you can always pick them back up in your notes app wherever you are. And on the other side, if you swipe up from the bottom left, you can easily take a screenshot, which you can then easily reframe or add annotations to. Now the thing I usually do is circle an item or maybe add an arrow, but did you know that if you draw a shape and keep holding, the iPad will make a perfect version of that shape? This works with your big hitter shapes like circles and squares and triangles, but also less obvious ones like stars and clouds. Give it a try and see what other shapes you can make that are made perfect. Next, let's take a look at some clever things you can do with those fingers. And if you're an iPhone, MacBook, or a trackpad user, a few of these are gonna feel like second nature, but either way, let's make sure that you know about them all. Now, first up, a one finger swipe will always take you back to your home screen. If you do a one finger swipe and hold, that'll let you quickly switch between apps. And then an easy way to get your iPad into split screen mode, just swipe up to get access to your dock and then drag any of these apps into the space on either side of your window. You can then resize it however you like. Well, those are the basics. Let's get into some advanced multi-finger gestures. Now, three fingers will let you do a quick copy and paste. It doesn't actually matter which fingers you use, but I tend to use these three. And the way I always remember this is it's like pinching something up off a table and then putting it back down again. It's this kind of motion. So a three finger pinch over some text or an image will let you quickly copy it. And then a three finger reverse pinch will paste it into whatever app you're in. Is reverse pinch a phrase? Okay, it is now. 
Likewise, if you're working on something and you want to quickly undo or redo without, you know, the huge effort of hitting one of these buttons, you can do a three finger swipe left to undo or a three finger swipe right to redo. And then all the way up to four fingers, you can do a four finger pinch to get back to the home screen or a four finger swipe to quickly switch between apps without having to load up the app switcher. I sometimes find this works better than being in split screen mode because you can use the full display when you're quickly switching between apps. So let's have a look at some other things you can do with your fingers on an iPad. Let's go back to the Photos app and not many people know about this one. If you select and then tap and hold multiple photos, you have to make sure you keep your finger holding them. They'll gather in this little stack under your finger. You can easily then move them to another app like Messages, Notes or Mail or just drop them into your Files app. Now this hold and drag feature works in other apps like Safari. So maybe if you see a picture online that you like, you can hold and drag to copy it over to another app, just like this. Simples. Now on the subject of fingers, a couple of keyboard tricks. This actually makes a massive difference on the little iPad mini. So I'm gonna show you on that. By default, you have a keyboard on the screen that covers the full width, which is nice because you can access pretty much everything by using all the keys available here. And then you can pull down on some of them to access special characters or push and hold to get variations without having to go into a special menu. And it's also kind of annoying because you might not be able to see what you're trying to type on. I mean, here on the iPad mini is taking over half the screen. Now you've got two options here. You can pull to drag this out like this to split the keyboard, which is really handy for a two handed grip like this. And it's also a bit more comfortable. And then when you're done, you can just drag it back together again. Now the other option is that you can pinch it and it'll turn into a little iPhone size keyboard so that you can move it around your screen anywhere you want, just like this. And this is super easy to tap away on one handed. How about that? And then if you want it big again, you can just do a cheeky reverse pinch. Yeah, I'm totally making reverse pinch a thing. Now I've got a handful of things left to show you and these ones are all pretty big productivity flexes. Prepare yourself. One of my favorite uses for an iPad of any size is the continuity feature. To make sure this is active, you just need to go into settings, general, and then airplane continuity and just make sure the cursor and keyboard is switched on. All that means is that if you're using a laptop near to an iPad that's signed in with the same Apple ID and you wanna quickly add or change something over on your iPad screen, you can have it so that your laptop, keyboard and mouse are able to move across to your iPad without doing anything completely wirelessly. How about that? And then just moving back again and you can carry on working on your Mac. It's kind of magic actually. There's also the reverse of this, which is using the iPad to control your MacBook. And yes, you did hear that right. So to do this, you just drop this menu down over here on your Mac. You can hit screen mirroring, make sure that your iPad is set to mirror and not extend. And then you can just use your iPad to control all the apps on your MacBook. So yeah, this is me and my iPad using my full Mac desktop version of Final Cut Pro, scrubbing through a timeline like a boss, and using an Apple Pencil to make it all happen. Oh, by the way, if you did choose to extend rather than mirror, your iPad becomes a second display, which you can drag Windows over to from your Mac. It's really handy if you need a bit of extra screen space, or particularly if you're working remotely without access to any kind of larger display. And then finally, all of the current lineup of iPads come with a USB-C connector, which is great for fast charging, and also means that you can connect loads of accessories up to them. Now, most of the people I've seen demo this by talking about enhanced storage, which is fine, of course, because it's a handy and a really cost-effective way to upgrade your iPad storage and avoid paying crazy Apple money for their built-in storage. But the thing is, you can use this for literally any USB device. You want a professional microphone plugged into your next FaceTime call? Great, just plug it in. If you want to plug in a massive multi-port dock like this one from Ivanki, it's no problem. You just added like 18 pieces of new IO to your iPad. It also works downstream for charging. So if you're caught short and you want to charge up your iPhone from your iPad, you can just plug in a cable and it'll juice you up in no time. Now folks, I don't know if you were counting, but hopefully that was an insane enough number of tips that you've learned a handful of new things to try out on your iPad. And I probably missed some cool ones out. Let me know your favorite unsung iPad feature down in the comments. And earlier I mentioned that the iPad mini is my favorite iPad. If you want to find out why I made a video about all the everyday things I do. And yes, I do mean for the average person, there's not a single bit of content creation in sight. So over here when you're ready. See you next time, folks.